All right, guys, today I'm gonna see if I can fit this vise into the sile. I thought this heavy. I can tell you right now, <laughs> that does not look good. All right, so this vise is pretty long and I don't even know if my hardware is gonna be able to reach that, but we'll see what we can do. One, oh, that's not enough. I'm gonna build some water. And unfortunately, the hardware they gave me doesn't fit. All right, folks. So, it's in here. The door will close, but the back of this vise would collide with those uh, Z covers. Now, I realize I'm not gonna be milling over here, but I don't like that. It doesn't make it doesn't make me feel good inside. It's just too big. And then to get my tool setter, I would need to put my tool setter over here because as is my coolant hoses are going to collide with the vise to get my tool offset. I don't like it. It's just too big. So it's just too big. I'm not even going to tram this in. It's not worth it to me. This is the size of my M125 M-lock vise. And it's a, it's five inches where this is a six inch jaw, but it's so much smaller. It's got such a smaller profile. I just don't see any advantage to having this vise. I'm gonna pull it out. Will it fit? Yeah, kind of, sort of. Yeah, the door will close. But my sixth sense is telling me, take it out. But I promised you a tramming video. So while it's in there, it's got a nice rear position fixed jaw. Let's tram it, let's go through the steps, and then I'll rip it out. Okay, to tram in this vise, we're gonna need three things. We're gonna need a wrench, whatever wrench you have. Crescent wrench works great. To loosen up these bolts and then to tighten them when it's trammed, we're gonna need a magnetic base. And we're gonna need a dial indicator. I've got this dial indicator preset to about 15 degrees here, right? So from the 15 degrees relative to the face of this jaw, I'm gonna stick this to the front of the spindle like so, right? Get it in its place. And then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, I've got it set up there on the spindle. Now I'm going to, now this is how I do it. I'm left-handed. This is how I do it. I'm gonna move this indicator to this side of the jaw. We'll put the tip below the surface. And then we'll work this in. Whoops. Ah, I'm at the extent of my Y travel. I'm gonna have to reorient this. This vise is big, Jeez, Louise. Too big for the sile, this is not a Haas. It's a micro mill, I guess. All right, so now I'm gonna touch off on the side here. And I'm looking for zero, zero's here. So I'll take it down into micron mode and work it in until it reads zero. So let's back it off and do that again. Zero's here. It doesn't have to be zero. It could be five, 15, whatever you want. Let's go zero though. Okay, so the whole gist of this is 
this reads zero here, all right? We wanna move this to here and it needs to read zero here as well, okay? That's the whole gist. And as you slide it across, whoops, it needs to, to raise, raise, read zero. And so right now, it's not reading zero. The vise is, is kicked this way, all right? So I'm going to loosen this bolt. I'm going to loosen this bolt and then snug it back up. And then I'm going to use this bolt as the pivot point, okay? To tram in this vise. That introduced the fourth tool that we're going to need. We're going to need this, this rubber mallet. Okay, I've got this one loose, a little loose. This one snugged up pretty tight. Now I want to bring this needle back towards zero, okay? And then I'm going to go back here, re-zero, and do it again. Oop, I got it backwards. Okay. So now I'm on zero again. Now, this is where I keep my sanity. I back that off of zero, okay? And I, <laughs> this is just the way I do it. I'm gonna go back over to this point, not reading anything. Now I'm gonna get back to this first zero, this zero right here. Okay, I'm on zero. Let's slide it back to this side. And what does it read? I'm one thousandth of an inch too far that way. Oop. I got, I'm backwards today. All right. Okay, I'm on zero. And again, I'm going to back off, go back to where I started, and re-zero, and then re-sweep. I'm only measuring at these two points at the corners and I'm perfectly on zero. Maybe a little bit, but actually no, I'm, perf I'm perfectly on zero. If you're looking at it head on. Back to the front where we started. Looks like there's some variation in this jaw. It could be dust. Could be a piece of crap jaw. This isn't the most, this is, isn't the most expensive vice out there. As, as you can see here, at this point, and woo, all the way down here, at this point, I'm at zero. So now this vice is square to the table, is square to the x-axis. Now that it's square, I can start tightening the, the, these bolts up, but you have to be really careful. This is the, the most critical point. A, a little goes a long way. If you torque on this, okay, now this, the bottom of this vise and the top of this table, they're, you know, they're, they're precision ground surfaces and I stone them before I put them on here. So they are wrong a little bit. They're on, they're on here pretty good. You know how surface um, blocks can, you get wrong and they're stuck together really well. However, if you, if you torque on this, you're gonna twist the vise. So you're gonna do a little bit on this side and a little bit on this side, and then I recommend checking your tram again, okay? And then you do a little bit on this side and a little bit on this side. So for example, if I just torque on this, prove me wrong, please. <laughs> That's pretty good. Hey, that's pretty good. 
Tighten that one first. All right, let's torque this one. This is especially true on, on that M-lock. Okay, I stand corrected. Off camera, if I torque those too hard, that vice is out of trim and I gotta do it all over again. But there you go. Even though I even torqued it down real hard, real fast, maybe it's because it's a heavy vice. This vice is in trim. When possible, always trim the fixed jaw. In this case, it's the back jaw. In my opinion, this is the easiest piece of equipment to trim in the shop. The rear fixed jaw hinging on this bolt. Just wait until you have to trim in a, a fourth axis or a, a live tool on the lathe. Then it gets a lot more tricky. Anyway, I'm yanking this POS off this mill and s I don't have any equipment to use it. So I guess I'll sell it or make a table out of it or I don't know what. Anybody want it? Let me know. Hit me up. I'll give you a good deal. So uh, thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you on the next one.